Hi guys, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. I am guest designing over at Just Nick Studios this month, which is the month of August. And so I have a little layout that I created from one of her cut files. So I'm starting off with a piece of 12 by 12 white cardstock and I'm using Creative Memories cardstock, which I've never used before. I thought I, I was actually curious about how it would cut in my silhouette cameo. So I'm just a uh, putting it on a cutting mat and then while it's cutting I'm taking this corrugated piece of cardstock from Fancy Pants and these pieces of corrugated cardstock come in some of the Fancy Pants collections at least some of their recent collections but you can also buy them as individual sheets. Now I wasn't entirely sure how my ink was going to stick to the cardstock whether it would sink in or make a make whether the cardstock would kind of break down too easily so I decided to spread it with gesso just in case and so gesso just seals that corrugated cardstock and makes it um, more able to uh, receive the medium and I'm going to be adding ink to it so I'm just drying it with my heat gun because I'm a little impatient and I don't want to wait I just used my cut file I was I was actually planning to uh, use the outlines you see how it creates this really cool outline and I was planning to make my title with that but I also had a feeling I might want to use the negative space so I created when when I uh, made the cut I I made it on land on my mat in a place that I might be interested in using the negative space for. So I had both options. I could have either used that outline font to make my title or use the negative space. And I love how the negative space came out so much that I decided to go ahead and use that. So at this point, I'm thinking I'm probably going to use these little circles that go in the centers of the O's and the A's and the D. I'm going to change my mind and not use them in the end, but I'm hanging on to them just in case. At this point, I, I was kind of 50-50 as in terms of whether I would use them or not. And I'm outlining them with my gray Chamel pen from American Crafts. And I'm doing that just to finish off the, uh, the cut a little bit. It gives it a nice kind of doodly finished look. And I just like the look and I'm going to outline around the whole outside perimeter of the page as well. So outlining around the cut also just kind of ties in the outlining that I plan to do around it. I'm outlining in gray because this is mostly going to be a red and white layout. And I don't want something so bold as black to do my outlining. I just want it to be a little bit more subtle in order to cut those uh, letters, because the when you buy an alphabet as a, as a as a cut file, it comes as a whole entire alphabet, and so all one piece. And so what I had to do was select release the compound path, and then I had to select all the parts of each letter and group them as individuals. And I didn't include that in my process because I'm just not all that great at using my silhouette. And so trust me, if I could do it, you could definitely do it because I'm really not very good at, uh, at the silhouette. Uh, but I managed to figure out how to do it. So it, it's not as hard as it seems. And there are YouTube videos. I actually didn't even have to uh, go to any YouTube videos, but there are lots online about how to use the silhouette. So you see me here with my Liquitex ink, which is one of my new favorite supplies to use. And the reason I chose this is not only do I love using it, but also it's one of the few red items that I have that's a really true red that's not pink. And so so the shade here is called, I think it's pronounced, it could be Pyrrole Red or Pyrrole Red. It's P-Y-R-R-O-L-E, Red. And you see that it makes this absolutely beautiful, real true red color. And so I started by just painting it onto the cardstock, the, the corrugated cardstock. And then I took a little bit more and I just sprinkled it with my paint brush, just a little bit of extras, just to give it a little bit more variation than just the uh, paint brush, brush strokes, I guess. And 
I wanted to put even more over here. <laughs> so I added some more and then I, I kind of decided that the, that the ink was not quite thick enough there. So I painted, I went ahead and painted on a little bit more ink on that side. And I'm going to go ahead and do a bit more splatting on top so that the splatters aren't all over to one side. I have to make it look relatively even. And then I went and I it, it wasn't looking splattery enough. So I actually took the dropper from the ink bottle and actually dropped really large splats right on it. So now I have my photo and I'm just uh, trimming it up with my Creative Memories trimmer. And this photo is cut at, I think it's 3.5 by 3.5. And then I just went into my scraps and picked a gray piece of cardstock. And I'm going to mat it and gray is going to be my accent color for this layout. And again, I mentioned that I didn't choose black as my accent for outlining and matting just because I wanted to have a softer, more subtle look. I think if I had made it black, it would have looked great too, but it would have been a much higher contrast layout uh, if I had chosen black as my accents instead of gray. So what I have here is actually a very old Scraptastic Kit Club kit. It's the Feel Again kit, which was the kit from February of 2014. And I'm picking out some of the black and white elements. Now, this piece of pattern paper is uh, just a scrap that I had from that kit. And it, you'll notice, has a cream base instead of a stark white base. And so it, I, Sometimes you can compare, you can combine white and cream, but sometimes it just doesn't look right to my eye. And so it wasn't looking really great uh, in the larger amount, but once I cut it down so that there, were, there was just a little bit of it peeking out of each side, it looked a little bit better and, I, and I'm going to go with it, even though it is a cream base. I would have liked it better if it was a, a white a white base but so little of it is showing and all the things around it will be white and so I, I think it's okay. So I'm just playing around with this doily and I'm going to not like it for a little while and then I'll change it and like it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so there we go. I'm noticing that when I use it like that, it's covering up the C. So I decided to just make it peek out of the left side there and, and just have one of the halves of the doily peeking out. So I put aside the other half for another time. And I feel like this layout is probably only going to have like a small cluster of stuff under the photo instead of uh, having uh, scrapbooking papers and embellishments and stuff all over the page. It's going to be fairly concentrated. So I wanted to use a little paper clip. I like using clips uh, when I have lots of things layered together just because it gives you some some visual interest there's usually just a whole lot of paper and I don't want everything to be paper over there so the clip introduces a new uh, a new material I wanted to use that Ellie studio little clip there it's like a paper it, it's a clip but it's made out of paper um, but I'm not going to be able to use it it's just not going to work so these are die cuts. They're a combination of die cuts from the Fancy Pants Beloved collection and also from Ellie's studio and also some Scraptastic exclusive die cuts from the kit. And so I have all of those together here on my on my desk and I'm just picking out things that I think will look nice in this little cluster. So I picked that large acetate heart that's that's transparent and a few other pieces. I'm trying to stay away from pinks and um, I'm just taking anything. It's a Valentine's Day kit so I have to be selective in terms of uh, what items I'm picking and this, it, this sticker set here is from Echo Park. And so I'm changing my mind about this little this little photo corner. I'm going to put it down by where the, the clip is. I think it, it looks good there. It kind of makes it look like everything is clipped together at that corner. And then this little uh, die cut that says Cupid's Arrow, if I layer it like that, then you can't see that it says Cupid's Arrow and that's going to make it be more appropriate for Canada Day. There are a lot of hearts on this layout, but we're a family and we love each other, so it's okay. <laughs> Um, I don't have any maple leaves in my in my stash. It was kind of funny that uh, I looked and looked and looked and I don't have any maple leaves at all, but that's okay. I can still do a Canada Day layout without a maple leaf. 
So that Ellie Studio, this thing that I'm cutting right now is from Ellie Studio. It's a little a little die cut. And I just cut it so that it follows the shape of the chevron that was designed on it. And then those little hearts make a nice little layer behind the little acetate frame that I have or transparency frame. Then I'm going to stick this little die cut heart from Fancy Pants in there and then the larger die cut clear heart transparency also from Fancy Pants. And now to balance out that, that pink heart over there, I'm putting this gray heart over here on this other corner. I like to repeat things in my layers as much as I can. So now there's a total of three hearts there, plus the little row of hearts from, from Ellie's studio. And that little cluster is looking quite cute. I thought about adding that little, that little transparency heart, but I'm not going to. Oh, it would look cute there in the center of O of the O, but I didn't put it there either. Then I grabbed this uh, border sticker from the Echo Park sticker set and I'm just going to run it under the title O Canada. What this does from, from a design perspective, what it does is it brings some scrapbooking embellishments over to the other side of uh, the title and so it kind of frames the title. The, the title is really going to be the main, um, I guess the main the main impact of this layout along with the photo of course and so I need to to put something below the title just so that your eye is drawn through the layout instead of just staying up in the top where the photos are so that gray arrow enamel piece that came in the kit from my mind's eye just finishes off that cluster and brings some enamel up there which will tie in with the enamel heart that I was that I planned to put down here and then that cut apart piece is from the Scraptastic Kit Club, the gray piece that's layered underneath of everything there. So um, I'm just going to cover the back of this in these really thick foam adhesive dots, though they're not dots, they're squares. And look at me go. I'm just putting tons and tons of them everywhere. And I'm focusing around the the die cut part because that's where I you're going to see the most lift and the most shadow so I definitely don't want any of the little pieces I'm less concerned about it sinking in in the middle because you're not really going to see that but I definitely don't want it to sink in around where the letters are, are cut I want lots of lift here amongst my letters and so I'm going back and adding the smaller squares in between the large ones and if you had foam adhesive tape or if you wanted to use some fun foam to provide lift here this would be a great opportunity to use it I do have some foam tape but I couldn't find it and I had this whole package of foam squares and they're actually a little bit thicker than what I usually use so this is the perfect opportunity for me to use up them to use them up and so I wasn't too 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 worried about um, using them up because I don't I'm not going to use that thickness for many other projects besides something like this so here I am just again it takes a little while you saw me use my heat gun just to make sure that all of that ink was good and dry it looks quite wet but it just dried wet because there's so much ink layered on top of more ink and so it looks shiny and wet but it's actually dry I tested it with my finger before I was ready to put the adhesive on and so another good reason for using gesso is if you're going to be using lots of ink um, it will layer better if you use some gesso first so excuse my head while I figure out I just needed it to be lined up I needed those two pieces of paper to be lined up perfectly in order for this layout to work and so I left the outside pieces I left the backings on so that I could go back after it was all lined up and just uh, adhere the edges at the end and so it is almost ready I'm just going to well I'm thinking about adding those O's those little circles to the centers of my letters but I really love it without them so I'm gonna just leave it I love how it looks actually and so I'm showing it close up but I'm not quite done so hang on you know what it's missing right can you guess 
It's missing some splatter, of course. So I'm masking quite a lot here because I really want to control where the, these drops land. I want a few of them right here in this corner. And then I want a few of them down here, but I definitely don't want them to land on anything. And then there's not quite enough up at the top. So I am going to mask a little bit more and put some up. There you go. And so I really like how that how that adds a little bit of a casual dimension to the layout, a little bit of casual interest. I love splatters on a less formal layout. So here are the photos and you get to see a little bit how the how the layout looks all together and some of the close-ups that you just don't get to see in the process video. So thanks so much for watching and check out Nicole's shop at uh, Just Nick Studio, which I have the link in the information section for this video. And I also have another process video using one of her cut files. So thanks so much for watching. As you guys know, I've been a big fan of Nicole's cuts. I've, I use them often and I was really happy to get a chance to work with her files this month. Take care and have a really great scrappy week. Mm -hmm.